Hello and welcome to today's lesson looking at electrical power. Today's lesson is suitable for both AQA GCSE separate science and AQA GCSE combined science for the physics module electricity. So in today's lesson we're going to look and try to calculate power and work done in electrical circuits. So we're going to try in today's lesson to define what electrical power is and what electrical work done is. Look how we can calculate those values uh, from uh, those values from information given to you, and then you can finally look at an experiment to investigate electrical power dissipation. So this particular part of the uh, course is on the power part of the specification, which links into both the equations and the definition of power, but it also includes this section on energy transferred as well, which is found on both the combined science and the separate science specification for electricity. Now, in previous lessons, we've looked at different equations to calculate different electrical values. So previously, we have said that current is the rate of flow of charge. So it's the change in charge divided by the change in time. We can rearrange that equation to get an equation for charge to be current times by the change in time, or triangle Q delta Q equals IT. We know that potential difference is the work done into or out of a circuit per unit charge. So we say potential difference is equal to work done over charge. And finally, resistance is equal to the potential difference divided by the charge, or R equals V over I. Now, just to clarify, that triangle symbol or delta symbol is to reference to change or difference in physics and maths. So, for example, delta L would mean change in length or extension, whilst L would just mean the length. Now, you've got to memorise these equations for your examination. You've got to know all these different equations for your exams. Now, again, you've got to remember these values in the base terms. So, when you're given a question, Current needs to be in amps, charge needs to be in coulombs, time needs to be in seconds, potential difference needs to be in volts, and resistance needs to be in ohms, and the work done needs to be in joules. Now, if the value is not given in these units, you've got to convert into these units. So, for example, if time was given in minutes, you would have to change it into seconds. Now, if there's a prefix involved, you've got to convert the prefix. So, for example, if you were given a value in kilovolts, you've got to remove the killer and have the value in volts before you start your calculation. So, you've got to remember these different prefixes. That K or killer means 10 to the 3. Milli or small m means 10 to the minus 3. Mega or big M is times 10 to the 6. Terra or big T is 10 to the 9. Micro or mu is 10 to the minus 6, and nano or, or n is times 10 to the minus 9. So what you would do is if you saw a small n, you would just replace that small n with 10 to the minus 9. So for example, 6 nanocoulombs becomes 6 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs. Now you'll also just check out on these are the different prefixes that go up in values of 3, so they go up in powers of 3. So we're going from 10 to the 3, 10 to the 6, 10 to the 9, then 10 to the 3. Obviously 10 to the, 10 to the 0 would just be the value 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 6, 10 to the minus 9. So like we said before, to remove the prefix, you just, you just change your symbol to the times 10 to the whatever. So 3 milliamps, well small m means times 10 to the minus 3, so it's 3 times 10 to the minus 3 amps. Now... You can also use this equation to derive another equation of electricity, the equation of power. Now consider a component or a device that has a potential difference V across its terminals and the current I passing through it. Now in a time triangle or delta T, we know that charge is equal to I times by delta T. So what we can then say is we know that we can use this equation to be to substitute it into the work done by electrons. Now we know that work done is equal to charge times by potential difference. So we take that charge value Q and substitute I delta T in there because Q equals I delta T. This gives us an equation which says W equals I times by V times by triangle T. 
Now, we know that power is equal to work done over time taken. That's an equation you learned in the energy module. So we can now say that power equals work done over time. We know that the work done from our previous slide is IV triangle T. So we're dividing that by T. So triangle T and T cancel out because they are the same symbol. So we know that power is equal to IV. So that's a very, very important equation. Power, which is the work done per unit time, can be worked out by the equation P equals IV. Now we can rearrange this equation to make I equals P over V, or rearrange and say V equals P over I. So just to clarify, electrical power is how much electrical work is done in the circuit every single second. So if you had a power of 10 watts, that would say that 10 joules of electrical work is being done in one second. Now, we, the equation is P equals V, which is potential difference, times by I, which is current. Now, you can rearrange this into a triangle if you so prefer, and you can see that on the screen. Now, the base units for these are power is measured in watts, but only when potential difference is in V and current is in A amps. So this equation can be used to calculate the power in any electrical device in a circuit, a bulb, a resistor, a motor, a buzzer, anything like that. Now, just to also remember something for you, that if we have our device connected to the mains, into the plug socket, that potential difference is always 230. And that's a value you've got to memorise, because the potential difference for any device, when it's plugged into the mains, when it's plugged into the plug socket in your house, or in the school, or in, a, in any building, the potential difference is always 230. Which means to get a different power, you draw on a different current, not a potential difference. The potential difference for every device plugged in to the mains is always 230 volts. Now, let's consider this in terms of a device like a light bulb. Now, any electrical device will dissipate power. So any electrical device will carry out work done every second. So in this case, work done, which means energy changing from one store to another, is a case of the electrical energy store of the circuit being turned into light waves and heat waves, which are then radiated off the light bulb. Now, the standard power equation is power equals work done over time. But we previously just said before that power equals potential difference times by current. Now, we can also use a pr another equation of electricity, R equals V over I, to derive two more possible equations to calculate electrical power. So, if we take our equation for P equals IV, and we know that V equals IR from a previous equation that we've learned. Well, we can sub that into the equation. So we can sub I times by R as V. So now we know that I times by IR is equal to power. We can collect those I terms. And we've got a new equation for power, which is P equals I squared times by R. Power equals current squared times by resistance. We could also work it the other way, though, because instead of substituting into V, we can substitute into I. So we know that I equals V over R. So substituting the equation P equals V times by I. So we now know that V times by V over R is equal to power. So power equals V squared over R. So that's our other equation. Power equals potential difference squared over resistance. Now, this allows us to calculate the power dissipated by any device in the circuit, by a resistor, by a bulb, by a buzzer, by a, um, a motor. Okay. Now, we know it's a dissipation because it's got a resistance term in the equation, and the resistance of the device will cause power to be dissipated out of the device. So, we've got two more equations to calculate power. So, power equals current squared times by resistance, or power equals potential difference squared over resistance. Now, any of these equations, P equals I squared R, P equals V squared over R, P equals VI, P equals work done over T, they can all calculate electrical power in a circuit. Now, which equation do you use in a question? Well, you, get, you use the equation which has the terms in it, in the question which allows you to work out power. So for example, if the question gave you current and resistance, you'd use P equals I squared R. 
If the question gave you work done in time, you do P equals work done over time. If you were given a potential difference in current, you'd use P equals VI, so on, so on, so on. Now again, all these equations need to be memorized for examination because they all calculate electrical power. Now, the last thing, like we mentioned before, is that power is the rate at which work is done by a device. So we can work out the work done or the energy transferred between stores in an electrical circuit by multiplying your equation that you've used for power by the time that the device operates for. So work done is the power of an object multiplied by the time taken the device, the device is used for. So if we know that power equals work done over time taken, we can rearrange that to say work done is equal to power time by time taken. Now, all electrical appliances are designed to bring about energy transfers. They're designed to have work carried out by them. Now, the amount of energy an appliance transfers is dependent on the power and how long it's switched on for, because work done is power times by time taken. So either of those values will affect your work done. Now, work is always done in a circuit when charge flows. So when a current is flowing through a material, work has to be done. That is a fundamental principle of our universe. Work is always done when charge flows in a circuit. So let's just look at our equation. Work done in joules, because it's an energy transfer, is how much energy is changing between stores, is power in watts times by time in seconds. Now look again at our units we should be using in our question. If you want your work done to be in joules, your power needs to be in watts, and your time needs to be in seconds. And so, remember, energy transferred equals work done, and it's power times by time, and the time must be converted into seconds. So, what have we learned in this lesson? Well, you should be able to explain how a power transfer in any circuit is related to the potential difference across it and the current through it with the equations P equals VI and P equals I squared R, where P, the power is in watts, potential difference V is in volts, and current I is in amps, and resistance R is in ohms. Now, we also know that all electrical appliances are designed around energy transfers. The amount of energy depends on how long the appliance is switched on for and the power of the appliance. And work is always done when charge flows in a circuit. And it's linked with the equation energy transferred equals power times by time taken. Now, you should be able to explain how the power of a circuit is related to the potential difference across it the current going through it, and the energy transferred over a given time. And you should be able to hopefully uh, explain the relationships between the power ratings for appliances and the changes in energy stores that these bring about. Because remember, power is the work done on an energy change in store per time. Now, that's what we've looked in today's lesson. So hopefully we can define what electrical power is and what, what electrical work done is. And we can calculate electrical power and electrical work done. And you can think to yourself, how could you possibly calculate electrical power dissipation in a circuit? And we'll follow this up in the next lesson by looking at how we can transfer electrical power and electrical work and electrical energy throughout the entire of the country with a concept called the national grid. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson looking at electrical power and electrical work done and have a lovely day.